So you're not drying your ren? Actually ren? Your heart drops into your gut. It's a good thing you're sitting down because you nearly fall out of your chair. The senator whistles. I didn't see that one coming. Brian or Ren or whatever his name is, is shaking his head. Me either. You close your eyes for a moment, but your uncle's heavily scrawled handwriting is all you can see. Let's go with, how am I supposed to believe you? Yeah, let's go with that one. Because I don't share this information with just anyone, and the senator can confirm that. You look over to Sheila, who nods. If I make you feel, if it makes you feel any better, it felt terrible keeping the truth from you. Really? Yes. We have a serious discussion about discretion and the importance of a secret. But I assure you, I'm the man you're searching for. Is Ren a last name or first name? That's not important. This name thing is going to drive me crazy. Listen, I don't know I don't know Tiffany. I don't kidnap young girls. And I don't know anyone who does. I'm a fixer, not a killer. You turn towards the senator. I trusted you. You asked to learn more about Ren. That was the best way I knew how to accomplish that. Which is no small fee. She used up more than one favor to get me here today. Is that what you deal in then? Favors? Business doesn't thrive on goodwill alone. You sound like a fortune cookie. Make fun all you want, but it's true. Favors can be valuable currency, but money makes them possible. Especially when your business encompasses international dealings. Sounds like you know a lot of people. One way or another, I work with a lot of people behind the scenes to ensure that good people don't get hurt. Good people like Tiffany. How would you know? I see the way your face softens when you talk about her. That's enough proof for me. He's really good at reading people. He and he seems trustworthy, but I need to know more to make sure he wasn't involved in Tiffany's disappearance. I should. Let's go find out more about his past. Where were you 13 years ago when Tiffany disappeared? Graduate school, nowhere near you or Tiffany. I didn't say where Tiffany was. He sighs. My education occurred overseas. Was she out of the country? You look down a little disappointed. No. I spent three years there, learning the ins and outs of diplomacy. A poli-sci major? He smiles. Not exactly. I worked for a consulate while I was studying. I got just as much education from my mentor as I did from my studies. I traveled around for a while, seeing the world, getting in trouble. <laughs> trouble like what? He shrugs. Getting medicine across enemy lines, toppling dictators, negotiating compromises. Now you sound like you're bragging. Nope, still just being honest. We've met as you've wanted. You've asked your questions. So can you stop digging for more information on me and move on? Oh, thanks for your lovely meeting. He stands to leave. No, I can't let him leave. He just got started. I should beg him to stay and help. He pivots towards the door, but you reach up and grab and quickly grab onto the sleeve of his black suit jacket. He looks down as if waiting to see what you're planning to do. Please, you can't leave yet. Is that so? He tugs at his sleeve, but you hold on. That's expensive to replace if you rip it. You respond by simply wrapping your hands around his bicep and pulling instead. He doesn't budge. 
You look deep into his eyes. You gaze intense and fix his gaze intense and fixed on you. Please, I need your help. I can't do this by myself. You said your sad eyes silently plead with his. The harshness of his expression seems to slowly fade. Please, Ren. You gently grasp his hand with both of yours. He lets a small and barely audible gasp escape, but he doesn't pull his hand away. Instead, he lets you firmly but gently pull him back into his seat. Ava. You can hear the discomfort in his voice. Finish hearing me out, would you? Do you believe in fate? Fate? Why? What does that have to do with the rest of my case? He discreetly rubbed his thumb against the underside of your palm. The way he's touching me right now makes it hard to focus. And if my heart won't stop racing before it is now. Just answer the question. I do believe in fate. I don't think that coincidence just happened. Good, neither do I. And I'm telling you right now that my fate is leading me to another meeting. <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's funny. His finger lingers over your own before he places your hand on your chair. And he stands, you impulsively reach out and press your hand against his ab in one last attempt to stop him. You don't understand what this means to me. Please try to understand where I'm coming from. There's a longing and sadness that crosses over his face. I already do. You remain there glued to your spot as you watch him, his back retreat through the waiting room and out into the hallway. It feels like you've gotten the wind knocked out of your lungs. Are you okay? You clear your head and turn to look at the senator. Sheila! Yes? He just left! Sheila gives you an annoying smile. He doesn't tend to wait around to be dismissed. You stare at the floor while holding back tears. I promised myself I would find answers for Tiffany. The center gets up and sits in Ren's seat next to you. She puts her arm around your shoulder. You will. But how? I have no other leads. Ren was my last chance. I still don't understand why his name was in my uncle's file. I can't explain that either, but to be fair, it doesn't sound like Ren can either. Either. You're good at what you do for a living, Ava. I have all the confidence in you to figure this out. After a lifetime of guilt, I can't let this go. Tiffany deserves more. And what if she's still out there? What if she needs help? You're right, but now what? The senator turns towards you. She leans forward with both arms resting on her knees. Now you wait. You blink confused. Wait? Do you honestly think a man like that is just going to walk away? He just did, didn't he? Ren doesn't meet with just anyone. He's powerful, I get it. But you have to agree, he's a bit much sometimes. <laughs> you have no idea. You study, you study the dreamy smile on the senator's lips. She doesn't tolerate. She doesn't fear him. I think she genuinely likes this guy. This wasn't just a favor for a favor. Their bond runs deeper. Your attention turns back to the senator. For one reason or another, your story impacted him here today. How can you be so sure? Because I saw the look in his eyes. He guards himself well, but he can't hide it from me. It was a genuine concern. When Ren wants to know more, and he will, he'll find you. Wow. After the meeting with the senator and Ren, you head to your father's house for your weekly dinner. It's been a long day. I'm eager to get home, but Dad would flip if I cancel our dinner. You approach the front door to your house you grew up in and ring the doorbell. For a split second, you hope he's not home, but you know. The door swings open, your father stands in front of you, still dressed from the day of teaching at the university. You're late. <sighs> I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. 
be on time. Look, it was really a complicated day. Tell me about it over dinner instead of standing at my front door. Ooh, rude. <laughs> Grouch. <laughs> nice kitchen. You follow your father into the kitchen. Nothing's out of place. It looks like something out of a Better Homes and Garden photo. <laughs> yeah, it does. Is she here tonight? Who? The college student from your lab that you've been sleeping with? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he gives you a cold look. My dating life is none of your business. I may not live in this house anymore, but I'm well aware of the hot blondes that parade in and out of your room. It's not a coincidence that mom was a brunette, is it? Your mother died when you were a child. She has nothing to do with my relationships. You simply sigh in response. <sighs> I need to calm things down. I should offer to help with dinner. Can I help you finish repairing dinner? He opens the oven to baste the chicken in his juices. The smell of rosemary and garlic fills the room. No, thank you. The infrared thermometer confirms my suspicion that the chicken has reached peak thermal output. Okay. <laughs> what? Temperature. Oh, right. I forgot to factor the thermal dynamics into our conversation. <laughs> You lean back against the counter and watch him search for the pro proper utensils to remove the potatoes from the roasting pan. Smells good. Do not sit on the counter. I'm just leaning. You're perfectly capable of standing up straight. You reluctantly move off the counter. Can I ask you something? He clears his throat in response. You sigh and try your question again. May I ask you something? Yes, you may. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I met someone today and I think I made some headway on Tiffany's case. He wasn't too happy. I don't want to talk about your cousin again. It's been 13 years since she ran away. Disappeared. She disappeared 13 years ago, Dad, and she was my best friend. I'm aware of that. He moves the roasting pan to the counter and starts carving the chicken. You need to accept reality and move on. It's been too long. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's never too long to find someone. Let's go with that one. I find missing people every day at work. People missing for weeks, even years. We don't stop until we bring them home. Except you find more dead than alive. Dad! I just want you to take the rose-colored glasses off and look at the morbid reality of your job. There are plenty of times we find people alive. You don't know where Tiffany might have. Your mother's family was a mess. Tiffany was a product of her environment. She was a troubled kid and ran off. <clears throat> she is not coming back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dad, I knew Tiffany better than that. And I knew that your uncle couldn't handle her. He's so mean, oh my gosh. She was so smart, so good at math and science, she could have changed the world. And what about you? What are you doing? Putting the world back together again, one family at a time, even if I can't piece together my own. At least, not yet. Your mind wanders back to the horrible night 13 years ago. If Tiffany hadn't been alone, I should think back to what happened that evening. Let's go down and we'll see where it takes us. The memory of Tiffany asking you to meet her and sneak out haunts you. She was so eager to run off with you. Tiffany wanted to see me that night. She probably stood on our street corner waiting for me, wondering where I was. But you weren't because you were a good kid and you were studying like you were supposed to. I was fulfilling the punishment you gave me for catching me wearing nail polish. It wasn't punishment, it was a character building experience. Your father form of punishment, punishment was forcing you to memorize an epic poem by Ezra Pound. You know, it's because of you that I've never looked at Ezra Pound the same way again. He beams with pride. 
so you're admitting my parenting methods were successful? No, I'm admitting how much I hated poetry. Academics are a way to enforce discipline. I believe it then and I still do now. I could, I could have read Ezra Pound any night, Dad. It didn't have to be that night of all the nights. If I, if I was on time, Tiffany would have been staying there alone. Maybe if I had been there. You'd what? Be missing too? I lost my wife. You're saying I should have lost my child too? You know, that's not what I'm saying, Dad. I'm sorry, it's been a long day and I'm tired. I really just want to have a quiet night with my daughter. I know, but I just wanted to tell you about someone who might have been involved in Tiffany's case. He looked at you with concern. Someone involved? How? I don't know, but there was a name in Uncle Gavin's files. You have no idea who this person is? If they're involved, they can be dangerous. I feel like I'm having deja vu. Enough of this already. Our dinner is ready, and I am done with this topic. I'm not hungry. Don't be juvenile. Sit down already and eat. That's the great thing about being an adult, Dad. I get to decide when I eat and where. He looks at you with a mixed anger, mix of anger and sadness. You need help. Survivor's guilt is not becoming a new. Yeah, well, just add it to your list of disappointments. He silently fills his plate and takes it to the table. Enjoy your dinner! You head out of the front door and fumble through your purse looking for your phone. Your fingers brush against the piece of paper with Ren's name on it. Could Dad be right? Could Ren have been involved in Tiffany's dis disappearance? Or could Ren finally help me find out the truth? Would it be irresponsible to, uh, to speculate? Yeah, we need to stick with the facts. Stop speculating. He already told you, okay, girl? He told you who he is and that he was involved. So let's just stick with the facts for now. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Letting my imagination run wild isn't going to solve anything. I have to stay focused. A few days later, you find yourself sitting in a regular coffee shop with your regular morning coffee. I really enjoy this ritual. It's good to start the day with a jolt of caffeine. And then you see him online to order using his smartphone, avoiding eye contact with the chatty girl behind him. Ren? <laughs> this is so weird. I have no idea what's going on. It's obviously mysterious. So, let's see what happened next. Let's see if uh, the Ren guy will help us. I'm sure he will. So, see you next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.